So when you think that you are doing something to help a community, don't think that someone will not be there waiting to be selfish, to be manipulative, to be narcissistic and try to get something for nothing. They're not there for the mission statement and what you're trying to excel upon. They are there to see what they can benefit from. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 66. Today is October the 10th, 2023. Podcast is open. We have 42 people in the chat. Thank you so much for being here today. You guys are elevating and moving beyond the reality of the Chronicles of Business. These are areas where at times you look at your your uh, business plan and you say to yourself, was this what I was thinking when I put this together? It's not what you're thinking. It's just the people who come in as clients, as you know, people who are um, generated from the mission statement that makes it so. So I have to go to court today and I was under the assumption that when you created an independent living shared facility, one would be one would be more aware of making sure that they're there for that reason. Well, being independent means that you are handling your business. You're going to work, you're going to school. You're, you know, doing some volunteering, you're doing something and that initiates a, a movement. And in this movement, one decides to just do the what's right. But when you have that one bad apple in the midst of it all, you know, and, and then as a landlord, you take on the accountability that, you know, these are things we're all adults. We can handle ourselves productively. We can handle ourselves in a successful way. And then you have to get to the point where the police has to be called. It's chaotic. It's interfering with other people's livelihood. Illegal activity within a house can divide the house. And when you're a landlord, you think that you have the ability to call the police, right? Mm -hmm. Because illegal activity means just that, illegal activity. But when you call the police and the police tells you that you have to evict, um, and there's a process, a lengthy process that should have maybe been taken before, um, beforehand, before, you know, but you can't evict without having a reason to evict. Even a 30 day notice, I have found just recently, a 30 day notice means nothing. It's just t telling them we're asking you to remove yourself from our property within 30 days. And then after that, now we go and do the eviction process, which could take between five to six weeks at $195 to $300 in order to get a person from your property in the state of Ohio. Now, mind you, the agreement is between two random citizens in this the individual should just be, well, if they're mindful enough to be uh, mentally stable, they're going to know that this means to leave. But when a person is entitled, when a person is empowered by other people manipulating the system, now they're going to stand off. They're going to have a standoff with the landlord. So now it comes into the process of going down here with the lengthy, long, whatever it takes. Now, most people are going to be respectful to the fact that, number one, you allow me an opportunity to be with you at this point in my life. When I needed a second chance, when I needed to be empowered because all my bridges had been burned, <laughs> now I know why. <laughs> so... But this illegal activity, I mean, 
Domestic violence is a serious crime. But yet in the state of Ohio, this domesticated violent person is allowed to continue to reside where he is, not knowing if it would cause harm to the next person. See, these are the chronicles, entrepreneurs. So when we're thinking about starting independent living houses, uh, Airbnbs, um, helping those who you know, need that second chance, we need to be mindful because people are not telling us this side of the story. They're waiting for us to fail because we don't really understand. But if we understand life, then we understand this. For every win, someone must fail. And I get that. So we have to exhale. And in exhaling, I am going to take the initiative to go down and be a, an advocate to the individuals in my home. And I am going to let people know that when police officers come out to the homes and there is a situation in the home and the person in charge is telling them this is a serious situation, anything can take place after that police officer leaves, especially when they have the uh, authority to at least write a report. They failed to write a report. So now it's as though no one came out to the house because nothing took place. But there's a lot of things that goes on after that, you know, and that is the part that makes me wonder if the homicides, if the domestic violence, if the corruption of what is going on on the illegal side is happening due to the fact that we can't even ask an officer to make a report when they come out to the house stating that they were here for this particular reason. So we could build a case against the individual, okay? The same officer stated that they had no report of anything happening at that house. And guess what? It happened on a Tuesday. I called him yesterday, which was a Monday. And there's a whole case filed domestically against this individual. And they did nothing, putting people... I feel that when we we call for backup and support, I understand that there's a process. You told me this was a process a year ago. I've been trying to get this individual out of the house a, for at least a year. And now I have to go through a, another strenuous process. And it's all about the rules and regulations that are not clear that should be revisited when it comes to housing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. This is a serious situation. So do we have any pointers on how to be our best selves when we are dealing with individuals who are breaking the laws in our properties. Yeah, unauthorized individuals. You know, protecting a property, protecting the people involved in there. And then there's a thing called constructive eviction. That is an immediate thing. If somebody is doing something that should not be done, what they need to do is be able to evict that individual. They need to be able to evict them immediately. Not go down there and do paperwork, do restraining orders, because this right here is something that is going to be... Um, hard to handle 
it's going to be hard to handle. Unauthorized people sitting here acting entitled, you know, disrespecting the rules. An unauthorized visitor was a long-term guest. In our properties, we have rules of how long an individual can stay at the house before at that time they're unauthorized. This individual was the only one who disrespected the rule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, Teresa. You do have people who can unauthorize and destroy property. That's the reason why we, we keep it to that one person. But this is not an Airbnb. This is not a hotel. This is a second chance opportunity to help yourself. You shouldn't even want to bring anyone there because you should be healing and working on yourself. But if you don't know that you have to heal and work on your own trauma, then that becomes vital. That becomes extreme. And then what happens? Oh my goodness, it is it is something that I didn't even think about when I put my business plan together. So entrepreneurs, if you are considering doing this type of work, I will be the first to let you know in the Chronicles of a Nonprofit here today that there are going to be times where you're going to feel you're in the right. You're going to feel you have all the documentation necessary. You're going to feel that you have the ability to um, call for backup and get support, and it's not going to be there. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do? Do you have to smile and and continue to go through the highs and lows of this individual disrespecting in your own property? Or do you blatantly just move him out? Yeah, Derek, at some point you could move him out immediately, pick up all of his things and, and throw it out in the middle of the, of the street. But then at that time, you could be, there could be a warrant for your arrest. I can do that. But there's a rightful way that the court says you have to do it. Because if not, then that causes severe concerns on my end as a landlord, which would entail that I broke the law. And when you break the law, now you have a warrant for your arrest. Now you can, you know, be walking out to your car and, you know, are you so-and-so? Please put your hand behind your back. You're charged with whatever. You know, this world is so severely, <laughs> it is so severely twisted. So anyway, I'm going to go downtown today. I'm going to do an illegal, uh, you know, activity um, on my property eviction. And I'm going to see if that's going to work. And I'm going to also report the two officers that did come to the house yesterday because of the fact that they did not file a uh, report just to state that I requested that they come to see what's going on and at least give me the rightful details. So these details means that it may not even be correct. They may not have wanted to write a report. And in not writing a report, they tell me eviction is in, in possession. But if there was already a report on, on a restraining order or whatever, it was an order of protection, then they would have to. They would have to be of assistance, but they were not of assistance. And it's okay because everything's going to work out exactly as it should work out. I have no problem with that. But it's just that me being responsible for other people makes it a division in my home. And that's not what I created my mission statement for. 
my mission statement was to help those with second chances renew their lives and rebuild their um, their situation, whether they were going through divorce, whether they're going through, you know, um, a loss of a job, whether they're going through whatever it is they're going through. That's what this is for. It's not to come in and this is your house. No, this is not your house. You're a renter in a room. But this is the entitlement that people tend to believe that they have. And, and they don't. They absolutely don't. You know, some people have, then when, when things hits the fan, then that's when you hear all the stories of, oh, this has been an ongoing situation. Mm. But it was something that was not, you know, divulged or exposed in the initial interview. That's another thing that makes it difficult to be truthfully giving a second chance individual a second chance because they're not helping themselves. They're not supporting the role in which they should be playing at that time. And those people just want to get off the street. They want to, you know, do whatever. But we're going to see what this rightful side of the law is going to. What doing it the right way is going to present to us. Yeah, Natasha, it's going to take some time. Yep. And money. Yeah, I have to, I have to um, report that. They, you know, I have to pay. I have to pay to evict. Yeah. And some people, when they come into your establishment, especially, that's the reason why I try my best to really do interviews. Because people tend to think that they have the right to do this or do that, you know. This isn't my first rodeo. I had a gentleman who basically told me that I was a slum lord <laughs> because he didn't know how to use the um, the heater, the thermostat. He had eye issues, and I think he had mental health issues, and he decided to share that, you know, I'm a slum lord because. Uh, you know, he didn't know how to work the thermostat and it was cold. And I told him to just press the arrow up for heat to increase. It was just that simple. But I guess when people don't want to take advantage of helping themselves, they will put any and every excuse in the book out there in order to make this happen, make that happen. And it's entitlement. And I see it. So, yeah, yeah. Craig, hey, what's up? Yeah. I will be calling you. I will. I've, I've been working on this uh, renovation and then this now. So, you know how my life is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being there. You can email me and I will definitely get back with you as soon as possible within today. So, yeah, guys, this is what it is. This is what it is. Thank you all for being here and supporting me. I will be going down to do that. Um, I think that constructive eviction is necessary and mandatory. Um. And let's see what the state of Ohio has to offer those who choose to help those who are in situations. Let's see what happens. So we will keep you posted. This is the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. And this is about the highs and the lows in business that we endure, the way we get through them, the scenarios that take place within them, how we feel we could be in a right, but the rules and the laws may say that those who may be right may be wrong. So always research, always validate, always get um, something in writing. But a lot of people know that that something in writing can be held in court if they've given you wrong information. So they're not going to give you that 
pertinent information necessary. They're not going to give you that. So for those who sit back in the bushes and watch for the failing, for the demise, well, here you go. It's something that you could feel good about today. Yes, I did lose that um, opportunity yesterday by getting that individual out of the home. However, I will continue to fight. So there is going to be a part two. And let's see what takes place after that. Because again, some people could just be lazy and just getting ready to get off work. And they are not trying to write a report. Yes, it was around 2.30. So I think the change of, uh, the change of schedule was taking place at three o'clock. So, yeah, that was the situation. That was the situation. And I thank you all for being here. Please tell me what you would do. Write me an email and tell me specifically what are some of your concerns about, you know, if you were that one entrepreneur that were thinking about renovating and starting to do independent or assisted living housing, how would you handle the circumstances if someone is doing illegal activity within your home, which I'm, I, I know domestic violence is an illegal activity. So to do that in your home and, you know, no one suffers the consequence behind it, what, the, what would that make you feel? How would that make you feel? And I'm going to see what happens. So I'll keep you posted. I'll see you tomorrow on Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Peace.